sometimes in these kind of things, especially with an older person, you do make choices. That, that uh, is it the surgery? Or do you opt for a pill, not necessarily a death pill, but that, that sometimes there are hard financial choices to make, leaving religion out of it. It's just, it's a hard financial decision. And in healthcare, that's it. Well, that's true, but that's the doctor's job. He's the only one that can, uh, can uh, lay out the options and explain all the details of each option. He's the only one. Who else? Um, if you don't mind my switching gears, doctor, but I wanted to raise this with you knowing when you were coming, the whole Michael Jackson furor and whether he was murdered and this report now that uh, he was given propofol and that uh, given in the doses it was given was fatal and, and uh, tantamount to, to murder. What do you think of that? Do you think the doctor who gave him that murdered him? No, I don't think he was malicious. That's a, you know, murder is def defined as malice of forethought. Did, was he, did he have that a forethought? I doubt it. Maybe uh, Jackson himself just uh, craved these things so much, he pestered the doctor who gave it to him just to keep him quiet. But the patient got what he wanted. So this was Michael Jackson's doing, not the doctor's doing? Well, he's the one who says yes or no to take a, to take a drug. Okay. Finally, I, 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 you're a controversial figure. People don't know this about you, but a lot of those assisted suicides, you didn't get a penny. You, you live a very simple life. Uh, you, you know, you're not a rich guy. Um, but increasingly in, in the public appearances that you have had, you strike some as a very bitter guy. Earlier in Florida, you struck some students as even anti-American. This is what a lot of people remember. Well, America's not the country you think it is. Every, these people have swallowed the line that America's a land of the free. How free are you? You're as free as the law lets you be, and America's the greatest law factory in the world. That was from a justice of the Supreme Court. He said that. But you turned the American flag around to show a swastika, and to a lot of folks, they said, Doc, now, now, now you're pushing it. What was that? You were showing a swastika on the American flag, Doctor, and that, that's when a lot of people who even liked you said, all right, now he's gone crazy on us. Well, we got a lot of traits of fascism in this country. Ayn Rand predicted it and said it's happening. And uh, there are 14 principles of fascism by a man named Lawrence Britt, who was with the Czechoslovak uh, Intelligence Service, and you and America fits all 14 principles. So you think we're done as a country? Oh, we're done as a free country, yes. We're, look at we're all enslaved and sheep. Most people are sheep. They cry when they have economic problems. Do something for me, the government said. They say to the government. That didn't happen in the old days. They went out and farmed. Unfortunately, we got technology which changed our way of living so that you must ask for a job. So you think Get all that. these handouts, I got you, so the handouts, the bank rescues, the auto rescues, the, the auto sales clunker program, all of that, you would have none of it? Well, I don't know if I'd have none of it, but I wouldn't have the degree we have now. Look at, you cannot transgress a natural right. That's the problem in this country. Natural rights are not honored. The founding fathers founded this country based on natural rights. You're born with them. They're not created by law. You can't transfer them to anybody. You're born with them till you die. You want to prove it? Look at a baby, the most free person in the world. Try to dictate to a baby what's illegal. Try to make a baby stop something because it's illegal. Try to say, you cannot urinate there. Yeah. Well. You can't. That's the way animals are. They're free, they're born with certain rights, which we sometimes call instincts. And they don't have, they, unfortunately, I don't think they got laws which block some of them. Maybe they do, I don't know. Maybe they got rules in their societies. Maybe natural laws. But it's the, the function of a law is only to keep you from using a right, that's all. A law can't create anything, a crime or a right. Let me, can't create it. Uh, let me ask you, doctor, how do you support yourself now? I know your medical license was revoked. Um, you live a simple Spartan life, you take very good care of yourself, you look in great shape. Uh, you're 81 years old, I believe. Uh, how do you support yourself? 
Well, I mean, first of all, Social Security, which is probably a mistake, but I'll take it. I paid into it. You well, took you're not going to get an somewhere. increase. I don't know if you heard. You won't be getting an increase this year. I heard that. I heard that, but uh, that doesn't surprise me. I'm surprised I get anything at all. But the other thing is I lecture at schools, and I love that, talking to young people, because their minds are still pliable. The older people are maybe like you, are petrified, petrified <laughs> brains. <laughs> well, I have you on. I can't be too petrified. I enjoy it. Let me get... We're all petrified. Look, but, but now, you, you know, you can't yes. be, be, uh, be that much of, a, of an alienated guy. I mean, you got Al Pacino playing you in this HBO movie that's coming well, out. Um, how does Al Pacino look as you? No, he looks exactly like they did a great job on him. He looks exactly like me. I thought that was my photograph when a, a buddy showed <laughs> it to me. Can you tell us or do you know how the movie's going to make you look? Is it going to be a sympathetic portrayal? Is it going to be a, a hatchet job? What? Well, it can't be more of a hatchet job than I've been through already. So anything would be... It can only be better. The only thing would be better from here. Now, uh, you know, I wish you continued good health, doctor. You are 81. You, you're not looking forward to go anywhere after you die, heaven or hell or anywhere. How do you want to be remembered? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. When I'm dead, nothing matters. Are you going like to have, you gonna have a grave? You're going to have a tombstone? Anything? Nope. Really? Nope. Have you any final no, wishes on how you go or? Well, probably cremation, but because it's the cleanest yeah. and then easy to dispose of the remains. And where, where, have you uh, passed along those wishes to folks? Uh, I'm not wishing you will, doctor. I'm just curious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've passed them along. Uh, can I ask you one question? Sure. When you transplant a heart from a baboon into a baby, as we did, and you say the body of that baby is sacred, does that, does that profane heart from the baboon become sacred when you place it in the body? Or when you take out a gallbladder and throw it in the garbage, is that a sacred gallbladder in the garbage? Or as soon as it's out of the body, it loses its sanctity? You see the silliness of our mythology? Children ask the questions I'm just asking now. Trouble is, children get slapped for asking questions like that because they have no defense. But you can't slap me. I can ask the question, it's a logical question. You say the body is sacred. What do you mean by that? It's godlike, divine. Then all the organs are, your intestines are, and they must have divine contents too, your intestines. Can you imagine that? There is a thought there, but well, were, you always, doctor, were you always of these views, like when you were a kid growing up, did you grow in a religious family, did you, did you believe in God? Did no. You believe, so from the get-go, you, no. you, that was it. My parents never foisted religion on me. My father never was religious much. My mother was from the old country religion, but not fanatic. We'd go on two, two times a year, I'd drive her to Detroit, and we'd, we'd go there just to be with them. But I never believed in God. I never believed in Santa Claus because it wasn't a tradition in the family. They didn't do that in the old country. What did you and do for what did you do for these... what did you do for fun as a kid then? What's the funnest memory you have? Well, we played baseball and cops and robbers and games. We we had fun. But this is natural. Everybody does that. Animals do that. They play, they're playful. What uh, but, made you man, want what made you be want to become a pathologist? because it was connected with every field in medicine and also the laboratory, which is important. I found out I like research, by the way, so it was the right choice. And you like, I never and you like myself helping people a, live, right? Well, no, not really. You, help, you, you just help the doctors who were helping the people. A pathologist generally is not a physician. He doesn't treat patients. A I, physician, I know, but part, a of, is part of that responsibility is you're working with physicians in what is the That's extension right. or continuation right. or the value of life. So you didn't share that? You're, you're, a, you're, you're a highly specialized path, uh, technologist, is what you are, as a pathologist. All right. Doctor, thank you. Oh, sure, you, you go through, medical, tra yeah. you go go through medical training and you know. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. It's been a pleasure.
It's been a pleasure here. Dr. Jack Kevorkian, continued good health. Thank you. Be well.